question one of the November 2022 paper is out of 30 marks, okay? And it's all finance. So let us see what it has for us. So question one says to us that Martha needs to buy school uniform for her son and daughter. She compares the prices of three different stores as shown in the table below. So we can see um, in the table below that the cost of school uniform at three different stores. So we've got store A, um, which is there, and store B and store C with the different uniform that is given. I always advise that you need to first go through whatever that is given before you jump to your questions. So we've got the white shirt um, and it's got the different prices at the different shops as well. So let's go down. Note, very important, whenever there's a note, you need to know that that note will definitely be used. So don't take the note for granted because some way, somehow we are going to be using it. So it says there to us, identify whether the price is given. Um, so identify whether the price is given in table one, a numerical or categorical. We go and we see, is our data given in whole numbers? No, our data is not given in whole numbers. How do we know that? Because look at that. We've got a number there that is not a whole number. So it's got your commas, meaning that this is numerical data. So it cannot be categorized. If it was cars and colors and tables and desks and whole numbers, we can categorize it. So this is numerical data. Okay, so please walk into the exam knowing exactly what we mean when we say categorical data, numerical data, and discrete data. And then the next question says to us, arrange in ascending order, a nice word again there that is very common um, when we are dealing with finance and data handling, ascending order. All the prices given for store B. So we're going to go through the prices given for store B. So this is store B. Okay, so if we are putting it in ascending order, it means we are categorizing it from the smallest number to the biggest number. So the smallest number here is going to be, oh, I almost thought it was 18 Rand 99. It's actually 11 Rand 99. Um, and then 18 Rand 99. So you can just use it according to that. So 11 Rand 99. And then 18 Rand 99. And then the next one. So what you can also do is just cut it out like that once you've used it. Then you know you've used it already. And then the next one is 39 Rand 99 and then 44 Rand 99. So 39 Rand 99. And then we said the next one is 45. 44 Rand 99. Please be very careful. Um, oh, sorry. Please be very careful of trying to um, I find what learners do sometimes is that they want to go and round the numbers off even though we haven't been asked to round them off. So don't round it off, give it exactly as it is. So now we've used 39 Rand 99 and we've used 44 Rand um, 99. So the next one is going to be 54 Rand 99. And I think the next one is 159.99. Let us just double check. Always double check your answers. There we go. And the next one is 169 Rand 99. So we get our full two marks there just by arranging our data. Free marks. I call that free marks. It says they name the store that sells the cheapest gray shorts. Let us go to the cheapest gray shorts. 
So first we would look for shorts and that's where the shorts are. So the shorts are there and then when we want to look at the cheapest, let me just remove this over here so we can see which number we are working with. The cheapest gray shorts would not be that and it would not be that because this is the smallest number. So the cheapest gray shorts would be store B. Cheapest means lowest as well. So store B. Whenever you see a mark allocation of two, you know you're not going to be doing too much calculations um, and you are basically just rewriting whatever that's in there that's being asked. 1.1.4 says calculate the price for a pack of white school socks at store C. So we want to know a pack of white school socks. Let us go to store C. So this is store C. And we are looking for a pack of white socks there. White school socks. So there we are. We need to be very careful in this instance because it says to us for five packs. Okay, but we are being asked for one pack. So it means we are going to divide 85.99 by five packs to get one pack. So that's 85.99. Also, look at that, the market location. 85 Rand 99 divided by five packs is going to give us um, a pack. Okay, so just be careful in terms of that. So that's 85.99. Seventeen rand, and remember to just press SD or change, which is seventeen rand um, and one nine eight. Seventeen. When it comes to rounding off, you need to remember that money needs to be given to two decimal places unless stated otherwise. We look at the number after that number and that's an 8 meaning it's going to change these two numbers because then the 9 is going to change and then the 1 is going to change so it's going to be 17 rand and 20 cents do not walk into a mathematical literacy exam when you do not know how to round off the next question determine the missing value of p if Martha bought all the school items at advertised at store A. Okay, let's go and see what this means for us. Don't be scared to make your paper dirty. Look at how dirty it already is. So store A, all these items are bought at store A as advertised. We want to know um, the missing value for P. So it means that we're going to do quite a bit of addition. Okay, so we're going to add up all these numbers that are given over here. So in us adding up all the numbers um, that we are give, given, I am using a separate paper just in case you are wondering. Um, we got for the white shirts, we've got two of them and we have them at 110 Rand. Okay, plus two times gray skirts at 163 plus 186, didn't need to put that in brackets because um, I'm not doing much with it, plus um, two times 40 rand 50 plus five packs of white school socks at 85 rand plus 349 rand plus 318. So whether you put that in brackets or not, it doesn't matter. And the reason why it's so important for us to have all of this like this, please don't forget, look, 
at that 50. I'm putting the 50 exactly as it is. If there was a comma 99, I was going to use it exactly as it is. Because the issue is that people want to go round off because rounding off makes sense at that particular moment. Do not do that. So I'm going to put that all in brackets. 2 times 110. Please don't be scared to double check your answers um, when you are using your brackets like that because sometimes it becomes a bit of an issue if you have made a mistake. Remember, you are human um, and there's definite room for error when we are human. Okay, so that's 2 um, times 40 rand 50. So look at all the values that I am putting in and where I'm putting my brackets. The nice thing about these calculators is that they do the bod mass for you. So you don't have to worry about doing bod mass. Just put everything in the right places as well. So there's 349 plus 318. Okay. That's 1,905. 1,905. So this is the value for P. Okay, so that's the total of how much Martha spent um, at store A. So let us look at 1.1.6. 1.1.6 says the probability of selecting store C to buy all the school items. So you see, we have all the school items there. So it's the, the probability of selecting store C to buy all the school items. Um, in ones is zero comma three 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 recurring it says determine the term probability in the given context so i would define probability as the chance of something happening in this particular regard um you would say that the chance of martha buying all the school items okay so in this particular case it's the chance of Martha, the chances of Martha buying all the items. In ones. Okay, so it's chances. That's what probability um, is defined as. And then it says here to us, write down the probability as a percentage rounded to the nearest whole number. So whenever we write anything as a percentage, we are just simply multiplying it by 100. So I'm going to take that. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 threes. I'm going to rewrite them as they are. 0, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So that is 6. 7, 8, 9, 10. We multiply that by 100. Whenever you multiply a number by 100, it's just moving decimal places to the right twice. So that's 1, 2, comma. So that's 33, comma, 33. So obviously because there's 10 threes, it's going to look like this. I always advise you to write all of it down first. Okay, and then we write it to the nearest whole number. Whole number simply means we're not going to have any of this. So this number is affected by the number next to it, meaning that it's going to remain as 33.